What's going on guys, Vic VP here. It's officially been one year since I purchased slash received my first ever real pinball machine, which snowballed into getting seven more machines. Let's talk about how the year went slash has been going. Let's talk about some things that I've learned and what the future holds for pinball. It's safe to say I'm hooked. I, I consider it as a good thing. <laughs> Let's talk. All right, you know the drill for now. Follow me on all the socials. What are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. There's a convenient link tree link down below. You'll see all the socials. Be sure to also like, comment, and subscribe down below. Maybe you're like me, this video is really gonna be talking about what I learned, how my first year of pinball has been, because it's really, as far as pinball, it's been pretty crazy. I've somehow become an influencer. Uh, I was the most hated person alongside B Kong uh, amongst the pinball community for a solid week. Uh, <laughs> I, got some, I got to meet some amazing people. I had Ken Cromwell that sent me out a gift. It's been it's been a fun journey, but like I said, I'm just going to take this video as maybe you yourself might be like me where you're kind of losing sleep and thinking about getting a pinball machine. And man, these are expensive. I'm going to be talking about the new inbox kind of theming or uh, experience I had versus what now that I learned, uh, you know, what to expect for the future. Just be sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and also be sure to follow all the socials. You'll see everything, all the behind the scenes stuff. What are you waiting for? Go follow. <laughs> I'm trying to keep this video like organized. It's just my mind is going so like crazy, but in a good way. I'm right now just hit 34 years old. For my 33rd birthday, I bought myself these brand new Jersey Jack pinball, the Godfather Collector's Edition followed by a Toy Story limited edition. And I'll be honest, amazing. It's, it's honestly, it's, it's well worth the money that I spent. A lot of things to talk about. I mean, these two things right here, it's bought so much like, I don't wanna say the word like joy to make it sound like we're not like, I'm not like joyful, but it's just bought so much like excitement and just everybody's having fun when they come over on just these two machines alone. It then snowballed into, yes, getting, well, with these two, it's two, and then I got a hold of six other machines, counting those three EMs, the free 99 ones I got. It's, it's, it's been a fun journey, it's, it's been crazy. All right, I'm gonna slide in on maybe two or three parts of this video. Uh, I shot the video, I went to go edit, and then it looks like I deleted uh, a part of my video because I say something later on about Olympics and it's like I didn't mention it so I'm basically going to retake that so you might see I'm wearing the same shirt I tried to keep it the same but I I may not be shaven but it's kind of cool that this actually happened we just got the release trailer for X-Men that came out I'll be honest I'm actually very surprised looks like a beautiful game and today this morning I actually shockingly got a DM from none other than Ken Cromwell. Basically stay tuned. Uh, me and a couple of others, which I'm very happy to hear that a couple of others, we got invited to do something. So stay tuned. Again, if you kind of see me like looking different, yeah, that's, that's gonna happen, sorry. <laughs> now before we get into full detail, let me give you an overview on, I guess, my situation. Uh, I am Vic VP. I do build virtual pinball machines. I have slash had my v-pin that i built when i was 30 years old so i had that which is now four years old it's gone through two revisions my original one was a 50 inch play field which was four inches wider than a wide body remade it to the new 120 hertz 42 inch oled which is now very close in size to a standard body pin so i've been in the world of v-pin for quite a while jersey jack released the video for Godfather. And when I had my V-Pin, I was like, I'm never gonna buy a real pinball machine. I have my V-Pin. Then I saw this thing, I fell in love, and 
now, now I've gotten eight real pinball machines in my hands. <laughs> To keep going about me myself, again, my first ever machine landed to me was the Godfather Collector's Edition. Yes, I modified the topper. That's a whole nother thing that happened during this whole one year. At the same time, about a day or two later, I ordered the Toy Story LE. Again, I have a whole story on my channel that you could see basically like you know, why I have these two. But again, because of Jersey Jack, because of Eric Minier, the Godfather is what really pulled me in. I love the theme. It is a gorgeous, beautiful machine, just like everybody that comes over and tells me it. And because of this, um, I am now down the deep rabbit hole of real pinball machines. After I got these, I've been looking online. I got a hold of my WWF Royal Rumble. I then got a hold of three free EM pinball machines that were in storage that somebody was giving away. Then I now have my roller coaster tycoon. I have an earth shaker as well in the garage. So there is eight machines exactly in one year of pinball. Again, I don't know if I should count those three EMs that I got for free 99. I had those for a solid two weeks because I was trying to fix them. Those were honestly quick flips. Again, I mentioned in the video, anytime you see free 99, you jump on it. Just recently, this past week, I almost came across another free 99 marketplace pinball machine. Uh, it's a little bit of a sad story, but it was one of those uh, cocktail table pinball machines. I forgot the exact name of the, of the machine. Um, it was in the Bronx. The lady said, it's on the, you know, it's on the corner, come get it. I got in my car, drove out, approached what I thought was the corner. I didn't see this machine, but I did see a 1-800-GOT-JUNK truck. And the guy was like, are you looking for something? I said, somebody posted a, a pinball machine. I'm here to take it. And the lady's like, oh man, it's already in the junk truck. And very sad to say it, it sadly stayed in the junk truck. It was just too deep. It was too buried uh, for me to take it out. Uh, the person, the people that were loading up the truck, they wanted a hundred dollars to take it out. And I said, no, I'm not, it's, it sounds weird for me to say that, but, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't worth a hundred dollars to me. So sadly, yes, almost had nine machines <laughs> of my nine of the eight, three of them. Yes. were free 99 and yes, they were intended to take fix and flip, which honestly then funded other machines. I would probably say, honestly, the money that went that came from those EMs went right to my Roller Coaster Tycoon and Earthshaker score. Now, again, one year, if you're looking at right now, one year old, I think combined weight on these two alone is like 700 pound babies. Um, it's just been, it's been an awesome, crazy experience. You know, I build arcade cabinets, I sell arcade cabinets, arcade gaming, video gaming versus like pinball, it's complete different worlds. Um, you know, basically I'm just making this video to tell you about how the year was. Maybe you're like me where like you're on the fence about getting a pinball machine. So maybe I could kind of ease your mind. But then I'm also going to tell you about a couple of things that I learned um, as far as owning these machines slash looking to get more machines. It's pretty crazy. Again, these two right here, proudly, I could say I got these brand new in box. But seeing how the pinball trend is now, spoiler alert, I probably will not be looking at getting new in box anytime soon. Now, keep in mind, Toy Story, though, was a lucky new in box score. I got Toy Story. It was in some guy's house. He had like eight of them. Uh, it was brand new in box, but it, I didn't get it when Toy Story was released. I got it a year after the release. So I got it at a steep discount and it was brand new in box. If I could come across a new in box deal like that, hell yeah, count me in for a new in box deal. Um, again, though, now, you know, learning and seeing how the pinball market is, uh, I would probably say looking at brand new in box, the fear of missing out FOMO it's kind of brushed off me. I no longer have a fear of missing out when it comes to any, any new machine coming out. Now, since I started talking about new inbox, might as well talk about 
my future with new in box versus getting used. Keep in mind, Toy Story, like I said, I paid $9,800 for this brand new MSRP is 12K. This one came right off the factory line, 15K. I took over somebody's deposit, which basically technically made shipping free. So right here in this six foot by six foot space is a little bit over $25,000. I at least got to witness, experience brand new unboxing these machines. I just really no longer have FOMO. Really though, I should say that as a content creator, which I was surprisingly labeled that in this year by other pinball people, <laughs> pinball podcasters and other people in the community. Um, as far as a content creator, that's kind of like the only thing I'll probably be missing slash I'll, I, I want. Yes, I'm not going to lie. You know, I would love to be the first person to get a brand new machine and stream it, get the views, have people say, hey, what's your thoughts? What's your opinions on this? It really would have to be a game such as The Godfather that a theme really kind of hooks me. Again, though, looking now at how the pinball market is going, pricing, I think I could wait and no longer have that FOMO. Now, this is really like difficult to talk about because I'm really zoning in on the Godfather, especially the collector's edition. Again, from my learning, Pinside is really a great place where you could kind of see other ads and you, you know, you get the message boards. People that I've learned, other influencers and people in the pinball community, they say don't really look at Pinside because it's just like, and I understand what they mean. But the one thing that really truly shocked me. But it's really, this is like a one, it's a once in a lifetime thing. Somebody locally in PA was selling their Godfather Collector's Edition for $8,500. I think it was a scam. I don't know if, the, if it went through, but it, it just made the you know, message, the forums go nuts. Because you're talking about selling a machine like, what is it like six to seven K under MSRP, which is wild. Again, now some might be like, Vic, you can't look at that. It sounds scamish. I don't think the person wound up selling it or getting it. I don't know. It was, it's just kind of crazy to see, you know, if you hold out for a year, you could get a steep discount. Again, I have zero regrets with these two machines that I got. These machines bring so much excitement and joy it is like, it's crazy. I don't want to make it sound like my house wasn't joyful before, but it's like every night my kiddo goes, I want to go play Toy Story. Like, okay, let's go. It's been amazing. Again, I got Toy Story for the wife and the kiddo. My wife really likes pinball because of Toy Story. I like pinball because of The Godfather. It, it really sucked us in. So zero regrets as far as that. The only thing you could probably say is that it, now I'm down a rabbit hole and I want more machines. <laughs> now, luckily in my situation, and I mentioned in past streams and videos, I'm, I really am looking at like four machines. Luckily slash not luckily, the machines that I want are very, not very dated, but they're dated machines. I have two of the four that I want, which is right now Roller Coaster Tycoon and Royal Rumble. The next one I'm looking at is a Sopranos. Um, those games you can't really find new in box because they're very dated. As far as the newer stuff that's coming out, I'd be interested in a Foo Fighters. Stern just teasing X-Men. I'm not into X-Men, but I kind of dig the concept of like the comic book style. I might be looking at that, but basically what I'm getting at is I wouldn't, I wouldn't look at new in box. Seeing the trend on pin side, you'll see people that get these machines and maybe about two or three months later, you could probably find it for about to possibly $2,500 less than new in box. That's just my opinion. I would just, I'm not really looking at new in box. Now I'm the type to keep in mind, you know, if somebody's selling a machine, let's just take Godfather. If somebody's selling a brand new inbox machine for 14 K, where the R's, the MSRP is 15, I'd rather spend the extra thousand and get brand new in box from the factory. Another game that just came out, is from Pedretti Gaming, Funhouse. I was never into Funhouse, but seeing the V2 or the um, LE that they made, I'm like, wow, I might want to get a Funhouse, but I'm not looking to spend 10K. I could wait 
and see how the used market comes out. It's a beautiful looking game. Not to mention you get two games in one. Who knows? I might be getting a fun house when I see it on a discount. I think the one last thing to end this whole new unbox versus used, I take care of my machines like babies. It's, I, I think part of that is because of knowing how much money I've spent. But every Sunday, me and the kiddo, she also gets excited, we clean these two machines. I mean, we're cleaning the rubbers, we're cleaning the play field, I clean the glass. These two machines get, I would consider, I wouldn't call it deep cleaning because that means you're taking apart stuff. But these machines get cleaned. My play fields, I feel like, are immaculate, but that's because I'm the type of person that wants my toys clean and immaculate. Getting it used now, I don't really know how other people treat their machines. So you got to keep that in mind. That's probably the only fear I have about getting used. Um, you know, me personally, if I'm getting used, I would hope it's local. It's a local sale. I wouldn't mind, you know, getting like STL involved and paying. But I guess that's a gamble that is, some people will be willing to take. Now, I mentioned in the video when I got that great gift from Ken Cromwell, the Godfather poster that's being amazingly hung up by my streaming rig. I mentioned that this machine right here, the Godfather and my Toy Story, I officially called that they will be bolted. Bolted meaning they will never leave my collection. I love these machines so much. They are, they, it's just, it's crazy the amount of fun that we're having. Now, one year old. Godfather has 2,561 games started. Toy Story has 2,032 games started. Now, if you ask me, is it, was it worth it, Vic? Again, like I mentioned before, the amount of fun hours. My Sundays, I got my brother that comes over, the kiddo, the wife. Every Sunday, it is pinball for hours. I'm talking like five hour minimum. Um, it's actually pretty funny. My brother gets very frustrated when he kind of drains his first ball within 10 seconds. So he has a tendency of opening the coin door and like, you know, restarting the game. Um, I did mention to him that you could restart the game by holding the left flipper and pressing start. But on the Godfather specifically, if you do that, you aren't able to, to restart your skill shot. It is what it is. That's why it says here 2561 games started, but it's 1869 games played. So in all honesty, though, it's my brother, even me in the beginning, but I kind of learned, um, what's the word? I learned discipline. I said, you can't just restart your game after one quick drain. It takes one ball to make you like, get you an amazing score. So yes, that's a, that's a thing. Now, again, if I would have played this at the arcade and I would have had to pay a dollar a game, right here would have been $2,500 spent. Now, Vic, $2,500 versus 15 k that's a big thing. I own this. I could come down anytime. I don't have to waste gas and miles because even still to date after one year, Silver Ball in Asbury Park, New Jersey is the only place that you could play a Godfather LE, not a CE. It's the only place that has a Godfather. Now, real quick, I believe also Toy Story. Asbury Park is the only place that has a Toy Story within like a hundred mile radius of where I am. No regrets on these machines. Now, yes, as I stated, one year old, this beautiful machine is a year old. And yes, no BS, I've only hit GC one time. This game could kick your butt. As I was mentioning about, you know, new in box versus used and getting it, you know, right when games get launched. Um, you know, for example, for The Godfather, it's been a year and we're still waiting for the final wizard mode, uh, which would be Kiss the Ring. We don't have that mode yet, still to date. Me personally, in all honesty, I'm lucky if I even get to the wizard mode, which is baptism. I have not done that at all uh quite a process you have to basically get a lot of the gangsters you have to eliminate all the gangsters times two it is quite a battle so you know there are some people that are upset we don't have the final wizard mode i've heard something about gnr uh and it basically goes into this whole thing about game updates uh even look for example john wick john wick was released and 
Everybody says they played it, but code needs to be updated. You just got to keep that in mind. Luckily, these have updates, whereas my older games like Royal Rumble and Roller Coaster Tycoon, those were like chip-based updates. Um, so kind of like a pro and a con where a system like this, even again, modern day Stearns, you could always update code. Um, I don't know what gets involved when it comes to coding. I'm not a coder, but I could imagine that there is quite a lot going on. The only big thing as far as Jersey Jack pins um, that I'm kind of jealous of, and I'm hoping this expo, they're going to release something, but Stern Insider Connect, it's a, a game changer. And just now, you know, we got the video for X-Men and all I could think about is like, what are they going to do with Insider Connect for that? Jaws just got an update for like an 8-bit mode. What could they do with X-Men on that? It's... It's a mind, uh, it's a mind, uh, it's a mind game. It, it blows my mind what the possibilities are. But yes, we are still waiting for a final code update. If you do look on Pinside for Godfather, there's people that are like, where's the final mode? Where's Kiss the Ring? And I'm like, I'm over here like, I'm not even close to that. <laughs> now, yes, these are expensive toys. With that, though, you have to keep in mind there is maintenance there is possibility of flippers dying, replacement parts needed. Proudly to say, after one year with just these two machines, um, I just had one, uh, I don't know how you, a ball lock mech. Um, just as far as Toy Story, the screws just kind of came undone and I had to just quickly fix that. Godfather, I had an actual rubber break within like, I would probably say the third month of owning it. Luckily, they do give you extra rubbers. That was pretty quick and easy. But now, honestly, like for Toy Story, I have to clean the rear rubbers that are underneath the Duke Kaboom ramp. So I'm gonna have to take apart a couple of plastics to clean those rubbers. Um, again, what I'm getting at, they're expensive toys, they are brand new in box, but you do have to expect maintenance on these things. Now, yes, these are expensive games. I no longer consider them toys. These are expensive games. And with that, you just got to be prepared for the maintenance. Again, I've seen people on Pinside where they get a brand new game and after one month, like a board or a coil gets fried. I just feel like maintenance is to be expected with these machines. I'm not saying that you should know, you know, you shouldn't be an electrical engineer and, get, you know, me, Percy, luckily I'm handy, so I have my soldering iron. I could do stuff like that. Um, I just feel like if you are looking at getting a pinball machine, you just got to prepare yourself because stuff could happen. Shit could hit the fan. Uh, <laughs> uh, but at least it is pretty, pretty fixable. Now, I'm mentioning this because I, in the garage, have my roller coaster Tycoon, and uh, it worked. And then all of a sudden, I have to swap out an opto board, and I had a coil that fried on me somehow. How? I don't know how, but you just gotta expect that, especially with a game that dated. Royal Rumble, I mentioned in a video that I went to go turn it on and half the playfield didn't power on. Luckily, after a TIP36 transistor swap, that's back up and running. Basically, again, if you're trying to, if you're looking to get into this, you just get ready. But luckily, there's a community of people that could help out. Again, people say that Pinside isn't that great, but you have your message board. You go to that specific game and look up the forums on that. I have a close buddy of mine, Dave Souza. Shout out to Dave. He's the one that's really helping me, holding my hand while I'm trying to fix my Stern White Star Roller Coaster Tycoon. It's funny because I have three other machines in the garage, but I have all the lighting set up. So at the end, I'll show you guys the other three machines in the garage, which technically right now they're getting, I'm preparing them for a deep cleaning and LED conversion. But... Again, I just want to talk about if you're if you're like me where you were like losing sleep, like, should I get this? Like, are people going to enjoy this? Is my family going to enjoy it? I'm going to tell you right now off the bat, I feel like any machine you get, people will enjoy it. It's just, it's just different. I mentioned in the beginning of this video that they should really do like, they should really have this on in the Olympics. Um, it's just cool to see it. It's, a, it's really a game of skill. I, I'll be honest, dad bod, I can't run. <laughs> You're not going to see me play basketball. Um, 
this is actually like I'm very happy because everybody has like the same like I, I what's the word I want to say everybody has like the same advantage or the same starting point it's just up to you on how you nudge and how you figure out the game to get that high score it's actually really funny my kiddo's gonna come down soon um I was I'm really again she's three I'm really surprised at how I would say she's she's fairly hooked but the coolest thing the best part is that when the kiddo runs up to me and she starts saying call outs and it's just like what like it's it's just hilarious again what I'm getting at in this section of, this, of the video is like you know I was worried that these were really going to only be for me again 25k alone I'm, I'm talking about these two machines alone then I got the three I was the type where I was like, do I want to spend this and just, you know, it's only going to be me playing it as my kiddo, is my wife going to enjoy it? I'm just happy overall that I pulled the trigger. My kiddo loves every game that I've bought home. And again, some people are going to say, Vic, she's three. Oh, she'll like anything. Mm, I don't know. I'm going to bring her down. And she'll tell you like the, 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 when, when Earthshaker starts, like Earthshaker, kids don't know, no, but Earthshaker is not like anything, meaning like it's not like a theme. It's not like Toy Story. She knows like how, when it starts, she knows like the catchphrase that he says. Uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon, she just, when the multi ball starts, because it's like, ah, multi ball, she, I'm telling you, you'll see her. I'm going to go get her. <laughs> You're all shy. When you press, what about when, when Roller Coaster Tycoon, when it gets the multi ball, what does it say? You're all shy? All right, well, she got stage fright, but she she knows it's sunny drive time. And, you know, when it's like Royal Rumble, like it's time to rumble. It's just amazing. It's great. Yes, she's three years old, but seeing that and her like reaction and her like getting all excited and flipping. Again, if you follow me on like Instagram and I'll even show you a couple of like videos. Um, it's been great. Godfather, there's an there's like the song, the, you know, speak softly love song. We actually like slow dance to that, like every time so i'm gonna actually show you real quick like the first like when i first got it and then like a recent one so look at us slow dancing to the godfather and yes i already called it that's gonna be like the wedding daddy daughter dance sweet 16 or wedding Let's not rush that, but yes, that's that's gonna happen. And I'll have that like in a video in the background. <laughs> now it's funny, this year the Olympics just got completed and uh, you know, they added new stuff like break dancing. Uh, we should include pinball as an Olympic sport. Yes, I said it, you might be laughing, I might be laughing too, but uh, it it is, it's a skill-based game. I'm just not athletically fit for any other athletic sport. So I feel like pinball is like right up my alley where Anybody could play it and you could have the opportunity to go gold. I don't know. It's a very just random thought that popped into my head. Now, as far as how the year has been going, it's been awesome. Again, big shout out to B Kong. Because of B Kong, I was able to go and play John Wick before it was even announced. Great experience. Again, I've said it many times and I will always say it. I'm very grateful for B Kong for even mentioning my name to this company. And they said, hey, you're in New York, go on down and play it. Amazing experience, but damn, me and B got roasted for a solid, I would say five to seven days by the pinball community. <laughs> it's, it's funny, it's, that's all it is. I, I always laugh at it now looking back at it, but I met a couple of cool people. Some people have reached out to me Again, Josh from Loser Kid Pinball Podcast, Kaneda. We've been going back and forth. Uh, it's actually very funny with Kaneda. But in the end, uh, Kaneda did shoot me a DM and, you know, we're, we're on good terms, basically. So it was very, it, it was just very interesting to see how the community took it. I was talking to B. Kong. I don't want to speak for B. Kong, but there's like, you know, people were just like, who the f are these guys and just like butchering us like it was wild um ralph shout out to ralph my buddy retro ralph he reached out to me he's like vic great videos we've been talking back and forth 
most likely, I just, it's me personally, I have to pull the trigger on if I'm going to go to Expo. Uh, Ken Cromwell invited me to a, pre a private showing of the factory. If I do go to Expo, they just teased Avatar. So I'm like, all right, Avatar is not a theme for me, but I will still go out and play Pinball Machine. So it's it's been fun. <laughs> that John Wick thing was, uh, it was, it was funny. It, in the end, it was very funny. It got several thousand views on my channel. Um, you know, the hard, the sad thing really, to be honest with you, was just how negative it came out. But in the end, I really respect all of the, you know, really higher ups as far as the pinball community reaching out. Uh, Joel, Joel Bob, flipping out pinball, you know, even he reached out and was like talking. It's very cool. I feel now like, pretty welcomed after we got rocks thrown at, at us, but it's all good. Do, don't worry. I'm, I'm happy with the outcome. You meet some cool people. Once you kind of actually, you know, reach out to somebody, like I said, Josh, awesome dude, he reached out to me via email and we've been going back and forth. And it's kind of like a, oh, wow, like you're an actual cool guy, meaning like me. I feel like, you know, once you reach out to me, like, oh, hey, Vic is actually a Cool guy he like means no harm like yes <laughs> i just got lucky because of b kong <laughs> now i mentioned briefly canada it's actually pretty awesome the outcome with the canada situation i'm very grateful one day canada was streaming and i was in the chat it was on his facebook streams and uh, a person by the name of michael f i can't pronounce his last name reached out to me wrote to me sent me a dm and he goes hey vic man i see you're in long island new york I run pinball tournaments in Long Island. And I wrote back, I was like, what? I didn't know, I, didn't, I had no idea about this. So again, another person that I met, Michael F, or Mike F, uh, he runs a little thing known as Long Island Pinball Society, LI Pinball Society. Really, I don't think we're limited to, I don't wanna say we, it's his thing, but uh, it's a community. I don't think we're limited to just Long Island. I feel like it's, all of New York. So if you are in New York, be sure to check him out. LI Pinball Society. He's on Instagram. I'll post the link down below to help him out. He reached out to me. He goes, hey, Vic, come down. Join us on a tournament that he plays in Hicksville. And I was like, oh, round one. Sure enough, I went there. And to date, I believe I've gone to five or six tournaments. He does them once a month right now at round one. And it's been awesome. I met a lot of people. Some people were like, hey, I think I've seen you on YouTube. And I'm like, yes, that's me. And it's, it's just really cool. Um, again, meeting a lot of people, especially locals. This is where I met a guy named Dennis. Dennis has an Escalera. I mentioned in the video with the uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon where I plan to hit him up, give him a couple of bucks and bring down those two or three pins I have upstairs very soon. Um, it's just great. Meeting a community it's awesome. We all love the same thing. You do get humbled though. The first tournament that I joined with, for, with Michael and everybody there, uh, I hit third place in our tournament and I actually made a post about it. So I'm like, oh, this is cool. It was my first time. Then after that, uh, there's some very good people that play pinball. <laughs> and I have been basically hitting like ninth place, 10th place if I'm lucky. So Again, another big shout out to Michael F. Mike F. over there, Long Island Pinball Society. Yeah, thank you for including me and giving awareness, bringing awareness to me that Long Island, New York, we have a pinball community. Basically, what I kept saying in that whole whirlwind, uh, I was like, we all, we all enjoy the same thing. We all like pinball. <laughs> That's where I learned, again, people will badmouth the hell out of a game. Right now, again, if you look at my collection, you, if you are into pinball, you might think that I have the worst collection, the most boring collection. You have an awful choice of play field layout. <laughs> but I love it. I love it. Look, so again, Godfather, flamed. People hate it. Toy Story 4. It's not Toy Story. It sucks. It's an easy game. Flamed. Hate it. Royal Rumble doesn't get much hate. It's a day to East. So I guess people, I don't know. Royal Rumble is one probably like neutral game. I have Roller Coaster Tycoon. I saw a couple of streams and people are like, this is the worst game ever. What were they doing thinking about designing this? But I grew up on Roller Coaster Tycoon. 
I love the theme. And honestly, it's I, I haven't been able to fully play it though because of my situation. My opto board, I can't start a mode. So I can't really even play the game how it's like, you know, mode based. I can't I can't play it. So the thing about Roller Coaster Tycoon though is like it's got these very cool, interesting mechs. I love the roller coaster. Like the legit it it vertical up kicks a ball into the yellow wire form. It looks like a roller coaster. I'm like, whoa, my kiddo goes crazy for it. My kiddo loves the little troll. Yes, there is no troll in Roller Coaster Tycoon, but it is what it is. You might say, Vic, you know, you pick awful games. <laughs> I don't care. It's pinball. I love, I love it all. Like I said, I just have to kind of work out if I'm going to go to Pinball Expo. I'm more focused on the family. Uh, the kiddo's going to be in school, and I don't really want to just leave for four days. Uh, so I'm going to iron all that out. But if I do go to Expo, uh, I feel like I personally would be welcome with open arms. Um, I would definitely like to meet everybody that's reached out to me. Uh, there's a lot. It's just like I said, it's a, it's more of a personal thing. I just got to kind of figure out the family situation, but all in all, if you are contemplating and thinking about getting into pinball, I would say do it, <laughs> but prepare yourself. Just like, just like everybody wrote, everybody goes there. Listen, you can't just have one machine. You just can't. You must. You're gonna. You're. They're like rabbits. <laughs> and yes, I am. Uh, I'm living proof of that. That that it, it is true. You just can't have one. I started with two. Now I had eight. If you count the EMs, um, it's actually pretty funny. It's it's. I've hit a point where I actually went into this um, man cave basement creator website, and I. I basically sketched out my basement and I learned that I could fit nine pinball machines down here with my arcade games. So it's like I have to do some Tetris, but yeah, who knows? Maybe, maybe nine machines will happen. Uh, I even went to the extent of like, not yet, but it would happen where right here, this wall here, um, I have an extension to my house. This is underneath the extension. Maybe we'll uh, maybe I'll put a hole in the wall and just open up a whole nother realm. <laughs> yeah, it's it's that bad of a hole. It's not gonna happen anytime soon though, but it's good to to think of the future. Now just to kind of like show you real quick, I don't have the lighting set up, but like Yeah. Even with all these machines, I can still put nine. There's actually design for two right here. So back box going that way. My main arcade four player by Vic 55 inches there that I stream from. So yeah, eventually there will be a pinball machine in the background while I stream, but I think we could fit nine. We should be able to fit nine if my measurements were right. And I'm pretty sure they are. I figured what better way to end the video than to bring you into the garage. Again, check it out. The Royal Rumble Data East wide body is my first wide body pin. This is basically ready to go downstairs. Uh, working on Roller Coaster Tycoon, I just did a mod to the actual back box where I did LED strips instead of that fluorescent tube. I got rubbers, I got LEDs ready. These two will be getting the whole deep cleaning, which I'm gonna start right after this video. Um, again, you can see videos on my channel about you know these machines here, even the three EMs that I got for free 99. It's been awesome. It's been great. Keep your eye out on Facebook Marketplace. You'll never know what you could find. You also may never know what kind of deals you could strum up. Again, you could take a look at the Roller Coaster Tycoon Earth Shaker video. Uh, this one wasn't even for sale, but I shot an offer and they took it. <laughs> now, I feel like there is a machine for everyone. Pretty sure you could find a pinball machine that is geared towards you. It's just be prepared because you are going to definitely want more. I personally like my DMD era games. Uh, I'm not really into EMs. Uh, Earthshaker, for example, is not DMD. It's got the, the I guess it's alphanumeric displays. Uh, Earthshaker, Diner, Funhouse, Bride of Pinbot, just to name a few. Amazing games, but like I mentioned, Earthshaker, I played it on location. Great game, but 
it wasn't a game that I was really looking to have. Um, intentions with that right now is to fix it, LED conversion, clean it all up, and sell slash trade Earthshaker. But as you can see, pinball. <laughs> Well, there you have it, one year. It's been a year, and it's been a hell of a year. I really can't wait to see what the future holds. I can't wait to see the possibilities of pinball to kind of conclude slash give you a summary of what I spoke slash what I was trying to get at with this video. Um, I love my Godfather. I love my Toy Story. I do not regret those purchases at all. Right now, those machines were are slash were worth every single penny I spent. With that, though, I did learn that new in box. It's great. It's an amazing. Uh, what's the word? Like it's it's amazing to get something new in box. It's a great feeling to unbox and unwrap and know that you're the first person to press start on a machine, but in all honesty, with the pricing now, um, I probably I probably wouldn't be looking at getting something new in box, unless I get an amazing deal like you see with Toy Story. But for me to get a deal like that, it's gotta be probably a year or two since release. I also learned that getting new in box sometimes is really not even a good idea. Look at games like, for example, John Wick, Jaws. They sent out games and uh, they need updates. So sometimes, you know, that honestly kind of relieved my fear of missing out, my FOMO. And like I mentioned before with, with Godfather, we're still waiting after one year for the final wizard mode. But in all honesty, for me, I haven't even hit the wizard mode, which is baptism. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> All in all, though, pinball, what an amazing experience. I got family hooked. I got my brother hooked. I got my kiddo definitely hooked. The wife is, is there. She saw Roller Coaster Tycoon and was like, whoa, what is this? She sees Royal Rumble and she's like, I don't like wrestling. So that's there's that. But uh, just seeing the kiddo get all excited, calling out call outs on a daily, it's like mind blowing. It's like, what? And aside from being one of two, I'm gonna throw my buddy B Kong in. Aside from being one of the most hated people in the pinball world for about seven days because I got to play an unreleased game and got to talk about it, I'm happy about the outcome. I'm happy about uh, people reaching out, content creators in this realm that are much better suited to talk pinball than I am, just reaching out after they you know made their comments and basically saying you know what Vic you're a cool guy uh you know we may have overreacted of course my camera would die right as I'm going deep into thought uh but basically just you know a big shout out to all the content creators whether you're a casual just person that enjoys pinball like myself whether you're a podcaster or a pinball enthusiast in the end we all enjoy the same thing. We all enjoy a flipper hitting this silver ball that activates modes, and we all have that same goal of getting grand champion, claiming bragging rights, entering your initials on machines, and enjoying the game of pinball. That's, we're all equal here. <laughs> There you guys have it, Vic VP, Game Case Arcade. Stay tuned, Earth Shaker and Roller Coaster Tycoon coming up for a deep cleaning. I proudly did that with Royal Rumble. It was a great, fun, challenging two weeks of elbow grease, but the end result is a thing of beauty. Flip on, guys and gals. Flip on.